When I am creating site plans or aerial images of a project or urban project, I encounter myself with various problems. And one of the most frequent ones is finding a grass texture that is perfect for my image. When I render it out from my project, sometimes it looks too perfect, even to the point that it looks fake. And when I lay it, lay it over a Google Earth image of the site, well, it doesn't always look good. Sometimes the satellite image has a bad resolution or sometimes it doesn't have the landscape it is supposed to have. So what do we end up doing? Well, grabbing one supposedly sing seamless image and repeating it infinite amount of times until we cover the whole field. When we do this, we instantly notice what can go wrong. And that is our seamless texture. It looks like anything but seamless. You can tell it's being repeated millions and millions of times. Another mistake I see very often as well is many people scale the image up too much and you can see every detail of the grass from an image that is supposedly very far away and you wouldn't see that. So one of the things I find useful sometimes is to create my own grass field texture. First, what we can do is download various grass textures. You can find great free downloadable textures in textures.com or you can just go to Google and type in grass texture. Set the resolution for high and search for a non-commercial texture where you, you are sure you have the rights to all the images. After this, we try to find various textures to merge. Why? Well, basically, if we take a trip to any part of the world in Google Earth, we can see that the grass fields are, are or any field isn't perfect. It has different variations of greens or it has different kinds of grass in the same field. Sometimes this is due to the fact that the sun is harsher in some parts during the day than in other parts. Or it can also be due to the fact that people use some areas a lot so the grass has a different visual quality to it than other virgin grass fields. That is why when we try to look for different grass, we want to merge it in different areas until we find the perfect alignment and balance. So I will download a main texture that is going to serve as the main background. Then I will download a secondary texture that is going to be located in the main areas. This grass can have a more saturated quality or appear different from the other one. Next, I will try to find a texture that is visually closer to a dirt pedestrian path than to a natural untouched grass. This is because almost everywhere in the world, people will walk wherever they feel is the shorter path to, the, to their destination. And sometimes we aren't aware of that and design the longest and most tedious paths. After we have downloaded our main textures, we want to open our site plan and import our textures. Now let's select the main texture and try to repeat it over our image. Now be careful in not making this image too big and also not too small or else it will lose its quality. Take into account in what resolution or what size this plan is going to be printed at so when it's done, the grass field can look perfect from far away, but if someone gets closer, then it can also look appropriate. Using masks over our layers, we will create a non-destructive workflow that will help us bring bar back parts that may, may have accidentally erased 
with our brush. After we have our secondary texture set, we can add the dirt road path that will wor work perfectly for creating that in perfect areas and make the image much more human. What we do is repeat the texture various times over the areas that we think the path is going to be on. Then we add a mask on that main texture layer and hit Ctrl I to hide the whole texture. After this, with a small medium soft brush, we start painting in the path. Make sure to vary the opacity. Start maybe at an 80% opacity and then go on to a 20, then to 100% opacity, etc. This also helps represent those paths that aren't as defined and aren't very noticeable from some points of view. Now, we have all of our textures, but we need to add a little bit more things, right? Some brightness and color adjustments, and finally, maybe some trees, people, shadows, and force well life. So we go on to the brightness and contrast adjustment layer and start playing around with the adjustments. We want to look for a tone that brings the whole image together. We also add a hue saturation adjustment layer and bring it down the contrast of the grass a little bit. Finally, we have our texture. Now we need to add some people, trees, or maybe some cloud shadows. Now this is a, this is an a tutorial specifically for that, so I won't go that deep into that subject, but basically the same principles can also be applied to this, right? So look for different crowds of, crowds of people, trees, and in the end, add some soft black shadows that simulate cloud shadows and help some areas stand out from other areas. This is how our image looks in the end. So what do you think? If you follow me on Instagram, you will have noticed that this is the long version of a post I created a few days ago due to the fact that many of you requested a further explanation of this process. So I want to keep on creating posts that explain in depth some, some concepts that are told in a synthesized way in my Instagram post. So which other posts would you like me to explain here? So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.